Hello everyone, in this video I wanted to talk a little bit about antibiotics. Almost every day when I'm in clinic I have at least one or two patients that basically want me to prescribe them antibiotics. And I'm making this video mainly to educate people on why antibiotics are probably not good for them. And in the vast majority of cases, we're better off not taking the antibiotics. Okay, so we're going to cover in this video what are antibiotics, how much of how much antibiotics are we using, why are they overprescribed, why do you feel better after taking them, and what harm is there in taking antibiotics? All right, so let's go here. This is kind of a list of antibiotics, and when we say antibiotics, we mean antibacterial drugs. So these drugs are not good against fungus, they're not good against viruses, uh, they're only good against bacteria. And depending on the antibiotic that's prescribed, only for certain kinds of bacteria. So most of these are drugs that maybe many of you will um, recognize, uh, you know, penicillin, oxacillin, amoxicillin, uh, cephalexin, this is known as Keflex, so that's a very common uh, drug, cefoxetin, ceftriaxone, the uh, brand name of that is Rocephin, so you, that's a very commonly used drug as well, ceftazidime, cefepime, Augmentin, which is amoxicillin plus this uh, beta-lactamase inhibitor, clavulonic acid. Unison, which is very similar to Augmentin, but it's ampicillin and sulbactam. And then there's Zosin, uh, piperacillin and tazobactam. Then these are drugs that are generally used um, in hospitals, so you generally will not get these as an oral drug, ertapenem, meropenem, imipenem. And then another common antibiotic that you may have heard of or seen or taken is ciprofloxacin, levofloxacin, and moxifloxacin, also known as Avalox. And then there's a, a group called aminoglycosides, which is streptomycin, gentamicin, tobramycin, amikacin. And then there's clindamycin, azithromycin. This is a very common one, also called a Z-Pack, um, because it's a five-day dose. And it's a very commonly prescribed antibiotic. Then there's tetracycline, doxycycline, vancomycin, uh, trimethoprim sulf, uh, which is Bactrim, uh, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, and then metronidazole. Okay, so these are the these are the these are this is not an exhaustive list of antibiotics, but these are the more common antibiotics that are used. And most people have probably taken one antibiotic in their life. Now, I've taken an antibiotic exactly once in my life, and I regret that I took it. Um, I wish I had not taken it, but I did. Um, I think I took moxifloxacin once for a pretty bad sinus infection I had when I was in residency. But other than that, I've avoided antibiotics as I've educated myself on um, the downsides of antibiotics. Okay, so that's what they are. They're basically, so again, they're not good for viruses. They will not help with your viral infection. It won't help you clear viruses. If you have the flu or common cold or any other viral infection, antibiotics will not do anything for you in terms of clearing the virus. It's only for bacteria that it's useful. Okay, how much are we using? Um, globally, there are about 40 billion doses um, taken per year. That's a lot. It's a lot of antibiotics in the United States. Um, approximately uh, 47 million antibiotic prescriptions are given for antibiotics that don't need, uh, for infections that don't need antibiotics. That means that these, they're being prescribed for viral infections and for fungal infections and for things that probably aren't even infections at all. They're just infl inflammatory diseases. And um, that's 47 million unnecessary doses and that's about 30% of all antibiotics prescribed. So that means in terms of total antibiotics, it's, we're looking at probably 150 million antibiotic doses prescribed per year in the United States. Um, and that when, they, when the CDC says it's not necessary, that means that it's for the wrong indication. And even for bacterial infections, the vast majority of these antibiotic uh, prescriptions are not necessary. People would have cleared the virus, uh, the bacteria themselves. For you know, thousands of years, people survived bacterial infections without any problems because their um, immune system took care of it. Now, antibiotics are very useful. They have saved millions of lives, and they are useful for serious infections. But if you look at this, there were 150 million antibiotic courses per year. That's not That doesn't mean that if we did not prescribe these, 150 million people would have died of an, or had a serious complication from their 
um, bacterial infection. No, that's absolutely not the case. Probably a very small percentage, less than a million of these would have turned into serious infections or, um, or, uh, or death. That means that the vast majority, you know, 150 out of the 151 uh, antibiotic prescriptions were unnecessary. They did not prevent any serious disease and they did not prevent death. Um, so the vast majority of these um, are, are probably unnecessary um, antibiotic uh, prescriptions. Okay, why are they overprescribed? A lot of reasons. I'll tell you, one of the reasons is that, um, so most, the first thing to note is that most antibiotic uh, prescriptions are given in the primary care setting. They're mostly given for respiratory infections, so colds, um, sinus infections, sore throats, those kinds of things. Those are the things that um, people are prescribing antibiotics for in the vast majority of cases. Most of the time, those things are viral infections, and a lot of times they're not any kind of infection at all. They're just an inflammatory problem. Um, but doctors give them because they're not sure. It might be a bacterial infection, and a lot of doctors um, don't feel very strongly that antibiotic uh, use is that bad. Um, and number two, uh, and I think this is probably the most common reason, most doctors understand that antibiotic uh, use is, uh, there's, too much over, there's too much use of antibiotics and they don't want to prescribe it. However, uh, patients are expecting it and patients feel like they haven't been listened to and they haven't been treated if the doctor refuses to give them uh, the antibiotic. And there's a lot of like patient surveys, patient satisfaction surveys, those things drive um, uh, doctor's evaluations and compensation. So it's much easier for the doctor to just give them the antibiotic than to spend 15 minutes or 20 minutes explaining to them why they're not giving the antibiotic. And if they were to explain to them, many patients would be upset and give them a bad review. And so that is probably one of the major reasons that antibiotics are being overused. And then why do you feel, so people are like, hey, you know what? I have this sinus infection. I have like green, you know, thick mucus coming out. And whenever I take antibiotics, I feel better. And it makes me feel better. There's, there's, two, there's two kinds of these uh, infections. Some of them are the acute infections or people that don't get them often. And they, get, they have a sore throat or they have a sinus infection. The vast majority of those people are going to get better if you just leave them alone. Their, their um, immune system will take care of the problem. They're going to feel bad for about a week or two while they're getting over their infection, but they will fight it off. Then there's another group of people that have recurrent, quote, infections. Most of these people have a underlying problem that predisposes to them to these things. And basically giving them antibiotics makes them feel temporarily better for a few weeks or a few months until the next cycle occurs over and over again. And for those people, um, giving them antibiotics like five, six, seven times a year is just not doing them a service. But why do people feel better? So what we figured out recently um, is that antibiotics not only kill bacteria, they have several other effects. One of the major effects is they have anti-inflammatory effects. So they reduce inflammation, and when you reduce inflammation, you are gonna feel better. And so this is a very well-known phenomenon where they, um, they, have, they, they suppress your immune system, they reduce inflammation, and they make you feel better. They also have analgesic effects. So they're basically like pain medicines. Many antibiotics act like pain medicines. So um, you're going to feel better because you have less pain. And number two, uh, there's a strong placebo effect. Uh, for any drug and especially for antibiotics because people expect to feel better with antibiotics and um, There's a strong placebo effect. So you will feel better if you get the antibiotics So if you're gonna feel better if you take antibiotics and they suppress they make your inflammation get better And they give you pain relief, you know, what's the downside? Why why don't we just take them? Okay, so there are downsides um, to them one of them uh, is a they drive antimicrobial resistance so we know that um, antibiotics have changed a lot and we're prescribing a lot of antibiotics and they do save lives um, and they, it, they have been a great um, advance in modern medicine and we can't do many of the things we do in modern medicine without antibiotics you know most large surgeries would not be possible transplants would not be possible a lot of cancer treatment wouldn't be possible and um, treatment of people with immunosuppression 
uh, is not possible without um, antibiotics. So antibiotics are definitely a useful drug. However, in people that have a competent immune system, they're not undergoing cancer treatment, they're not undergoing major surgery, they're not undergoing organ transportation, transplantation, they, the antibiotics are being overused in them, and that's driving, what, what, it, what antibiotics do is they make it so that the bacteria that are susceptible will die off, and then the bacteria that are resistant to it, they're the ones who survive. And so you're selecting for uh, the bacteria that can resist the antibiotic. And of course, as soon as you start prescribing a lot of antibiotics, then the, the, uh, the bacteria that are left are resistant to many. And so now we have things like VRE, vancomycin resistant enterococcus, MRSA, which is methicillin resistant staph aureus, and then we have multi-drug resistant bacteria these bacteria are a big problem, and there are uh, we are very soon coming to the point where there's going to be uh, bacteria that are resistant to all our known antibiotics. In that case, if you have a serious infection with those, we don't have any um, recourse for them. And so you, so it's this is a problem on a population level. Um, because we are, we're selecting more of these resistant bacteria. And it's also a problem in the individual level because every time you take antibiotics, you're selecting within your body for bacteria that are resistant to that antibiotic. And so you are basically enriching your body of antibiotic resistant bacteria. Number two, um, they are a major disruptor of gut microbiota. So uh, if you, there are several videos on this channel about our microbiome. And maybe I'll make some more. It's one of my. It's it's a very important topic. We have lots of bacteria in our body. In fact, we have, by some estimates, ten to a hundred times more bacterial cells than we have human cells in our body. And most of these bacteria are important for our health. They regulate our gut functioning. They regulate our, our immune system. They regulate inflammatory uh, processes in our body. And if you mess up your microbiome which is the good bacteria, you, you can have lots of problems with your GI system, with inflammation, with autoimmune problems, with immune function, with psychiatric function. It's been linked to, to dementia and uh, psychoses and depression. So lots of problems with uh, the microbiome. This is especially true in children. So giving children antibiotics is especially bad, but also bad in adults. So the the antibiotics that we give do not differentiate between good bacteria and bad bacteria. They just kill all bacteria, the good ones and the bad ones. And most of the bacteria in your body are the good bacteria. So you're wiping them out and then they um, it repopulates most likely with more bad bacteria and less of the good bacteria. And uh, then finally, there are a lot, you know, Antibiotics are drugs like everything else, and they have side effects. Most of them are common side effects like diarrhea, GI problems, nausea, vomiting. And then if you're allergic to the back, uh, the back, the antibiotic, of course, you can have an allergic reaction. People figure that out, and then it's put in your chart that you're allergic to it, so you don't get those anymore. So those are the very common. And then um, you get secondary infections of like yeast infections because you've cleared out the bacteria, the good bacteria, and now yeast have a, it's like a fertile field for them to grow in. So you can get yeast and fu other fungal infections. And then some of them have um, specific side effects like uh, you, can, you can have kidney damage, hearing damage. Um, some of them cause ten uh, liver damage, tendinitis and joint problems, uh, liver toxicity, hemolytic anemia, peripheral neuropathy. Um, so lots of um, possible side effects with these, um, with these uh, antibiotics. So there are lots of downsides in taking them. But the biggest downside I would say is you are, two things, you're concentrating more resistant bacteria within your body, and two, you're messing up your immune system, which predisposes you and can lead to uh, prolonged uh, inflammatory problems, um, autoimmune issues, um, and lots, and just poor health, both physically and um, psychiatrically. And so that is why uh, you should avoid taking these if at all possible. I would say for most infections, we should wait it out. And that's why I've 
I took antibiotics once for that sinus infection. I've had sinus infections with other infections, just like everyone else. And I just waited out. Um, if there is a serious complication, yes, you do need antibiotics. Like if you have really bad pneumonia or you're having some abscesses or things like that, yes, you do need antibiotics. And I'm, I'm, I prescribe a lot of antibiotics in my career and I'm not against them. I'm against overusing them and they're grossly overused. Um, so if your doctor is, is saying that you don't need antibiotics, he's, he or she is being a good doctor and trying to look out for your health uh, for the most part. Okay, so I hope that this is helpful for you guys. If you have any questions or comments, um, put them below. And, 